Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. This video is going to be the first week of August, and I just went to my code class three days ago on Saturday. Ugh, boy, that was long. Um, so glad I get paid for that. Um, you guys who are going to wonder about the 2020 code, there is a ton more residential updates. So they had like 3,370 extra new things, changes to the code. So new code articles too. But I'm gonna focus on GFCI protection because I always get this when realtors call me negotiating some sense of safety. GFI protection, you better read up on 210.8, Google it. You people are used to sitting around in your underwear Googling everything on a Saturday, sipping on coffee, watching me or whoever. Please Google it because they are getting really strict on GFI protection. We thought it was gonna be below grade, it's not. It's gonna now be 240 volt protection on all equipment in residential above grade and below, and outside, and the garage. Basically, pretty much everything. The thing I don't think they were picking on yet was baseboard heating, which is good, because some of my homes have a lot of quad breakers with it, um, but some of them don't. So, but GFI protection is gonna be a huge ordeal. Uh, laundry rooms, basically everything, except for the light fixture, unless that's tapped off of an outlet too. Um, and then now it's going to be our garage. So we, if you guys are trying to say, oh, GFI is just like two kitchen counter plugs, a bath and the outdoor and a garage is way beyond that now. Um, so basically this is a wood shop. It's going to be interesting to see how these GFI breakers play well with 240 volt drill presses, dust collectors, table saws, um, weed, kilns, Tesla's leaf, Honda, electric cars, uh, AC units as well. Oh, by the way, we have to have it now outside. Or we have to protect the circuit to the AC outside. Do you have any homes around here in Northern Colorado? I have quad breakers on ACs. I have a two pole tandem tie 30 and a 50 or a 20 and a 30 or a 40 and a 20. And I'm supposed to now GFI protect those? I'll be setting spa disconnects outside that are 30 or 50 amp just to do that. And by the way, if it is like a compressor, right? Who knows that a dirty compressor is going to blow it up? It will. Welder, take MIG and dirty arc welding. These things are going to blow up these breakers. They don't have neutrals. Unless an AC unit does have a neutral because it has a little G a GFI receptacle built inside of it. Then it does need a neutral. Um, but yeah, you better get used to that because now we're going to be setting a sub panel for a remodel to do an AC. So if you're getting a mini split put in and you don't have the bus bar space, you need two full spots. And it's not west side, just two full spots. So here is now, this is an electric car, GFI'd outside. Search protection, I'd love to know if they want that GFI'd. What a redundant thing. I doubt I'm ever gonna do that. Right here, air compressor, 240 volt, GFI. This 220, this is 20 amp, that's gonna be GFI. These are slaves to those. Whoo, I get a little bit of a break. I definitely would buy a receptacle every day over a breaker. That saves me $50 per item. GFI, of course. GFI, of course. GFI, of course. Oh, sprinkler clocks? Yeah, those for sure now GFI. GFI over here? Of course. Ceiling? That's already supposed to happen, but you can't climb to a ladder to reset because readily accessible location. So you got to do it down low to trip it up high. But out here... What about the heater? Oh, and you guys who say, yeah, I mean, just go get yourself a $25 breaker, a $30 breaker, depending on the brand. Uh-oh. Now, you could, if you could find a GFCI breaker here to feed a sub panel as a 100 amp square D home line, you could GFI. But guess what? Once you have one thing faults out, all of this is going to kill. I don't like that idea. But it would be cheaper to set one and do the whole panel, right? But again, one thing faults out to ground, the whole thing is gonna trip that. And you're not getting it back on until you figure out which circuit is, has that issue. And I think that's gonna cause you a lot more heartache, but you could go ahead and spend now one, two, three. Now I know that Siemens has got a 20, a 30, a 50, and a 60. I think a 100, but they don't have a 40, and nor do they have a 25, nor a 15 for Pete's sakes. So all you manufacturers, who help write the code or help introduce this stuff, uh, get off of your butt and get those things invented. Like, really? 
I don't know how we're going to get through this. This is the same problem we had in 2008. We have multi-tie function breakers that could not share a neutral to a black and a red wire. What does that mean in English? These two wires here, dishwasher disposal, and they were supposed to share multi-tie. It's because they shared a neutral. They didn't have those for six years. <laughs> we had to cut off the red, go in the house, pull another wire through the house and drill holes, make a mess. Just so we could have a separated arc fault and waste a red wire that was already there. But thank God for the multi-tie breakers that can do that for arc faults. They still don't have a dual function multi-tie that shares black and red. They do have a dual function only black or dual function only red, of course. They still have that. Again, pulling through, guys, um, you would remind you that this would be one, two, three. And if they want to be really anal on me, surge protection or my heater. Yeah, that could be one, two, three, four, five. Uh, $150 a breaker. I'm sorry, I'm slow in math. I have an eight. $750? Tax? $800? Five GFI breakers. Again, if you don't have the full bus bar space, you have these quads or these twins, you're screwed. You need to set another sub panel just to fit these damn GFI breakers. Do I think it's wise? I think on some things it is. I definitely think that the electric cars are going to play safe. But I don't think a lot of these motors in the garage, especially the stuff that people get off Craigslist and YouTube, I think they're going to blow up these breakers all the time. So, and the customers are going to be calling me back for the problem. And what, put in another $150 breaker to tell them it's the same problem as to their compressor? Heck no, I'm going to take out that breaker and put one of these in. And I'm going to test it before I go blowing up another breaker. And if it is his issue, then he bought it off of Craigslist. That's his problem. Now, I do agree that a breaker has to have an EGC grounded conductor to help it trip. No doubt about it. But does it need a neutral to help it trip? No. GFI still works without a neutral needed. But technically, GFI breakers are designed for neutrals. Ground fault circuit interrupting. Did you say it was a grounding conductor or the grounded conductor? Was it the chicken or the egg? Of course, the grounding conductor is needed. So a lot of people say, would you buy a home that has no grounds and is 1950s and prior? No. Now it says grounding conductors. I think the grounding is so important. Anyways, guys, uh, hopefully that'll help you out. But yeah, when you give us a call and you're asking about GFI protection to sell a home, minor stuff. It's just simple. It's just cheap. It's just two plugs. Don't use the word just or simple or cheap. Nothing in that circle is about electrical. Thanks, guys.